Ladies, gentlemen, and squirrels, I've got just four words for you. Demon Slayer is back and here to stay. Personally, I can't think of a better four words to hear and I wouldn't want them in any other order or length. As many of you know, Demon Slayer is like my favorite anime, and I am unbelievably excited to see what direction this season takes it in. They just keep one-upping themselves. Season 2 was like 5 times better than Mugen Train, which was like already 10 times better than Season 1. It's just great content. It's a simple story told with an incredible amount of depth. So let's see how deep this pool gets with season three of Demon Slayer. Now, full disclosure, I did see this episode when it released in theaters. Um, however, I have the memory of an elephant with Alzheimer's and there are a couple parts that like wildly confused me when I first saw it. So I'll, I'll be sure to mention them again here because I certainly haven't gotten smarter since watching this. So now let's get into it. Mina! Ugh, ugh, look at my boys. Look at this little igloo of cuddles right now. Look at this absolute fortress of love. God, I'm so happy Demon Slayer's back. Hey guys, we aren't at the beach. You don't gotta flex this hard. The Infinity Castle remains the best integration of 2D and CG animation that I've, like, ever seen in an anime. These animators were so confident in their ability to make CGI work within their 2D world that they designed an entire location exclusively in CG. And they were right. It just looks so good. The colors, the lighting, it all just works so well with the 2D world that they've already established. Why are we giving Akaza this three days grace music video introduction here? I guarantee some 15 year old saw this and rushed straight to Final Cut Pro to put this shot in their animal I have become AMV. Like just rewatch those three shots while thinking, So what if you can see the darker side of me? No one will ever tame this animal I have become. Oh, cruising, absolutely cooking through the Infinity Castle. Ah, cause it looks like Matthew McConaughey trying to quantify love right now. Bro, chill out, chill out. My girlfriend is watching Cool It! What did the marketing team for Five Gum direct this scene? What are you going so hard for? I don't want to feel insecure watching an anime because a character stands up sexier than I do. Jiminy Sebastian Cricket, what the hell am I looking at? Hey guy, your face is wrong. This dude's eyes, lips, and baby hands are all in the wrong order. Speaking of which, why are you covered in baby hands? Why did you paint your little baby hand nails? You look incorrect. It looks like God had a stroke halfway through creating you. Hey Gabriel, you ever finish making that person I had you create while I was in the bathroom? Oh yeah, totally, all under control. Cool, so there are no issues? Gave him all the right parts, eyes, mouth. Oh yeah, yeah, you know, gave him a couple of those. A couple? A couple of what? A couple of eyes. Oh, okay, good. You know, and mouths. Mouths? Don't worry, they're all in the right place. Are they? Yeah, probably. Now I just gotta figure out how many more baby hands I should give him. Give him two hands. Two more? Two total. How many does he have? Dude, I gave this guy... <laughs> I gave this guy like 30 baby hands. Why? Oh, relax. It's my first day. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah. It's <laughs> Why is Doma dressed like Miss Frizzle about to teach a class on tomato farmers? Oh god, put your gross baby hands away. Oh, thanks. Doma's like a golden retriever. I love how he just snaps his pretty little face to attention. Oh no, his pretty little face! Look, I know this isn't the case, 
but I like can't believe the upper one isn't Tanjiro's father. Like how is that not the twist? He looks so much like a Kamado. Also, no spoilers. Nobody tell me the actual answers to any of the questions that I ask in this video in the comments. You guys are usually pretty good with that. For some reason, Demon Slayer brings out the worst in you guys. I never get spoiled in any of my reaction series, except Demon Slayer. Rengoku dying was like the world's worst kept secret, and I like I have no idea why. What, what what's what's wrong with you monsters? Anyway, please no spoilers in the comments. Or if you want to, if you want to discuss the episode, make sure you got like a spoiler tag, and then you know hit space. A bunch of times so that it's under the read more. <laughs> like, is there anyone that doesn't think this looks sick? Like, is there anybody in the anime community who's like, nope, Demon Slayer's using CGI? Get it out of here. I'm not watching. Like, they just cut to what almost looked like real life glass shattering amidst this 2D character and it still looked phenomenal. Like, I know there's a lot of, like, Demon Slayer is mid people out there. I just wonder if any of them are delusional enough to say that the animation is one of the reasons why. You're still in the pot? Are you always in that pot? Get out of the pot! What are you, a genie? How does one become a pot demon? Genuinely asking, do you have to suffer some pot-related death? Because being in a jar seems infinitely worse than not being in one. Says the guy who can't pick a gender. Says the guy who likes to walk around with a cooch every now and then. Oh god, I hate seeing his gross little baby hands free. But don't blush! The last thing I want to see is this thing getting all oo oo on me. Akaze, you gotta stop doing that. Now you're just being rude. God, everyone treats each other like jello in the demon world. Look at this absolute puppy boy! I hear what you're trying to say, uh, but could you tell me what you're trying to see? Jesus Christ, you got enough eyes, dude? They aren't even looking in different directions. This guy can't see more than the average person, he's just looking at the same thing a lot. Dude's face is like the pattern you'd see on the back of a moth's wings to scare away predators. In all honesty though, next to Akaza, this guy's probably my favorite character design in the entire show. Maybe even more so than Akaza. However, you are not gonna convince me that this dude doesn't look like an older evil Tanjiro. Again, no spoilers please, but I like, that's, that's what I'm holding out for. I guarantee this guy's gotta have some connection to Tanjiro. Why is this guy adorable? Every time I start feeling bad for Doma, I just remember that when we were introduced to him, he was like halfway through eating a woman or something. Oh, shucks, but I just love him so much. I, like... Is this Tanjiro's father? Banjiro? Is this supposed to be Tanjiro's dad when he was younger? This is like not what Tanjiro's dad looks like from what we've seen. Or is it Tanjiro's just having a weird dream? I don't know. It, I like don't understand this. Yeah, and this dude's got Tanjiro's earrings and scar. Tanjiro's weird, like, ever-changing birthmark or scar or whatever 
is such a such a weird mystery that I'm constantly choosing to ignore because I'm terrified of the reveal being unbelievably dumb. I'm terrified of it being like he was part of a clan who became the first demons or something like that. I'm so not excited to find out that Tanjiro is part of a prophecy or something. <laughs> Hey Goto, <laughs> nice to meet you. Go on, I guess the floor is yours. God, finally, finally, we're getting Goto's backstory. Yo, let's go. It's about time we got a deep dive into Goto's origins. I want spin-offs. I want light novels. I want live action adaptations. All right, I'm I'm here ready to launch the whole Goto cinematic universe. Oh, this chick screwed up now. Goto, we're like go to your fucking room, bitch, before I beat your ass. What a perfect reintroduction to Inosuke. He is my favorite and the best lunatic of all time. Honestly, though, that absolutely would have scared the hell out of me. He looks like a giant spider on the ceiling, which are already things that exist in this world. <laughs> I, are we saying that Inosuke is secretly part honey badger? Just making a callback to an incredibly outdated meme. Inosuke's eyes are actually in the pig's snout, right? So right now he's just getting a, getting a good hard look at Tanjiro's cheek. Um, okay, cat, chill out with your artsy ass subtitles. I don't need you making me cry with your poignant ass cue card, all right? That was sad as hell. Look, I've heard that Inosuke and Zenitsu are largely absent from this season, which sucks. Uh, but honestly, if losing Inosuke is a price we have to pay to ditch Zenitsu, I think I'm willing to pay it. Inosuke is one of my favorite characters in all of anime. And yeah, it sucks that he won't be in this season. But like, he he had such a great last season and film. You know what I mean? Like, he had a ton of play in Mugen Train in season two. Like, he can sit this one out. This isn't the last season of the series, after all. It's just so weird that people are like, yeah, season three is gonna suck. Zenitsu and Inosuke aren't even in it. Like, spoiler alert, dude, they aren't the protagonists. <laughs> Why does he like that one? That looks more painful than the split. She's got him in a full wrestling move right now. Yo, listen, don't split me, but you can crack me in half any day you like. You know what? I'm getting sick of all this Nichiren sword propaganda. Everyone's always saying how these swords are like the best in the world and they're like changing color and stuff. But he's fucking breaking one each season. They don't even do anything. They're just regular swords. Hell, Inosuke even breaks his with a rock every time he gets a new one. <sighs> okay, settle down, guys. It's like hardly even a town. This is like the least dramatic village Tanjiro has been to yet. Get out of here with your dramatic swooping pan. <laughs> Oh, let's go! Let's go! Boobs and ass! Mitsuri? More like Listerine! Cause I wanna wash my mouth out with some of her! <laughs> Yo, what are these crusty ass bangs though? Why do so many characters walk around looking like they have a head crab attacking them? <laughs> oh, you're in luck. Showing respect is like Tanjiro's favorite activity. Get 
What a fucking gentleman! Tanjiro's out here paving the way for a new generation of MCs. When other anime protagonists trip, they accidentally rip off a woman's clothes. When Tanjiro trips, he accidentally knits him a sweater. <laughs> Doc, what are you doing? Those belong in your head. It's always weird seeing this insanely ripped body underneath the head of a 14-year-old. Especially when Tanjiro's physique ranges anywhere between an Austrian bodybuilder and a sorry game piece. <laughs> oh boy. Demon Slayer, could you... Could you just not? Could you please not? Could you just make like a shoelace and not? Tanjiro Jesus Christ, keep your boobs in, lady, you're in public. Tanjiro just wooed the hell out of this assistant. I can't tell if this is actual advice or if Mitsuri's trying to hook up her assistant friend. What's a secret weapon he has to find? Is it the clitoris? You see, this is why I'm so okay with Anosuke and Zenitsu not being in this season, because they're being replaced with two Hashira, whose abilities I'm super excited to see. Meeting the different Hashira and seeing how they react to different settings and different, like, conflicts is so interesting. It's like one of the most exciting parts of the show and arguably one of my favorites. <laughs> okay, cool, and I'm right back to being confused. But that was the supersized episode one of Demon Slayer season three. How was it? Obviously good. Obviously it was good. God, Demon Slayer is so... Cool. The first half of this episode goes so hard in terms of like animation and tone. Like the music is sick. Demon Slayer's got really cool music. And I feel like I don't hear about that often enough. I'm so excited for this arc. I also heard a lot of people being like, oh, the arc's only 11 episodes long. Well, what is that? It's 12. This episode is like two episodes long, essentially. And also like, I'm so cool with like 12 episode anime because there's so much... There's so much great anime out that if they want to just have an insanely, like, high-octane, action-packed 12-episode season, I'm so for it. I'd so much rather that than, like, the, the mess of a pacing that is Attack on Titan's entire series. You know, give me 12 episodes, make it, like, at a breakneck speed, and I'll be happy. I'll be engaged. I'll be excited, uh, which is why I'm super excited for this one. But as always, let me know in the comments what you guys thought of this episode and uh, what else you'd like to see me react to. Let me know also what your favorite jokes from this video were. It helps me and my editor uh, come up with TikToks and short form stuff. And I will see you guys next time. How's it going, boys, girls, and squirrels? Demon Slayer is still back, and that fact is just as exciting to me this week as it was the previous, as it will be every week until it leaves. I'm still so excited, primarily because I still don't really know what this arc is about. I know it features uh, the Mist Hashira and Mitsuri. Uh, I know it takes place in this sword village. That's pretty much it. I don't know which uh, upper demons they're gonna be fighting, if they're fighting any. I don't know anything, and that's an amazing feeling to have. So now let's get into episode two, and hopefully have a little bit less of that feeling. Tanjiro, how are you just gonna run past the six-armed robot standing there? It is the year 1912, and there is a six-armed robot dressed as the literal man of your dreams standing right beside you now. How's that not the first thing being addressed? <laughs> Oh yeah, you're so tough with your 90 pound body and baby blue frosted tips. Shut up, you look like you belong in the Winx Club. 
You look like a Neopet. You look like a Japanese pop star cosplaying as a Glaceon. Hashira no jama o suru te yu no wa so yu koto da yo. Hashira no jikan to kimi tachi no jikan wa mattaku kachi ga chigau. I love that every Hashira that isn't Rengoku is at least a little messed up. And I love that every Hashira, including Rengoku, is at least a little psychotic. Hora, kagi. Jibun no tachi ba o wakimae te kodo shi na yo. Akanbo ja nai n da kara. Oh, down low, bitch! God, Tanjiro's like a, like a cool Ned Flanders. You know, just coming in with that sweet high five, like, absolutely not! Yeah, that's right, Tanjiro, let him have it! Let him have it! Tanjiro Duck! You can't just expect strangers to stand there and listen to you yell at them for extended periods of time without hitting you. Alright, that's being a dork 101. And regardless of me liking you, you are objectively a dork. I can't wait for this mechanical doll from 1912 to literally come to life the second someone turns its key. <laughs> yeah, like, shut up. This is a literal robot. How does this thing fight? Like, don't get me wrong. I love a good, creepy anime puppet. But they're always ridiculous. It's ridiculous in this. It was ridiculous in Naruto when Conqueror's like doing this and the puppets just like doing human functions. It was also ridiculous in Naruto when a literal robot showed up, which I would argue this is more akin to. <laughs> Oh, isn't Tanjiro a descendant of a sun breather? So is this Hashira like Tanjiro's cousin or something? Also, he's a descendant from a sun breather, right? But he's he's a mist breathing Hashira. So that must mean these fuckers are dying their hair, right? Rengoku's got red and orange hair because he's descended from a fire breathing clan or whatever. This kid's a descendant of a sun breathing clan. Glaceon. <laughs> Oh my god, he used all for one. That was a signature Deku technique right there. Look at Tanjiro just showing up in people's lives like he's a goddamn positive affirmation fairy. Like, he, like he's a, the goddamn Nanny McPhee of the Demon Slayer world. God, Tanjiro is so good! I know it's like classic shonen protagonist behavior, but what's so good about Tanjiro is that he's constantly needing help of superiors to win fights. Like, recently he's been struggling with not feeling useful enough. After Mugen Train, after he couldn't save Rengoku, after Season 2, when he, like, felt useless in his fight with Tengen. So, like, when he starts throwing out speeches like this to random strangers, it feels so genuine and so personal because he's kind of trying to hype himself up, too. Oh, so Oh! Tanjiro, kick this guy's ass! Tanjiro, kill this guy! I love where this kid's head is at. I am in full support of him training Tanjiro to kill this Mist Hashira bitch. <laughs> so technically, that thing just got a kill off on Tanjiro, right? Like if they didn't replace its swords with clubs, Tanjiro would have just gotten stabbed. So technically, does that mean that this doll is stronger than Daki? I didn't see Daki getting any stabs in on Tanjiro, that's all I'm saying. <laughs> 
水も食料も与えないという暴挙 Jesus Christ, Tondro, stand up for yourself. Kick this kid's ass. Why are you letting everybody walk all over you? If you learn anything from this training experience, make it how not to let a 12 year old bully you into starving to death. Are you even becoming a better swordsman? How does losing 30 pounds of muscle and barely sleeping help you? You're literally going to die. That's <sighs> mean. He literally died. What is this? Did Tanjiro just unlock a new smell? A smell from the afterlife? Is Tanjiro phantom sniffing right now? This is without a doubt. My least favorite aspect of this show. And I'll even go as far as to say I hate it. Why can you smell attacks coming now? Like, what changed? He almost dies and then now can smell better. That's bullshit. <gasps> Sword? You were the mechanical doll the whole time? And I would have gotten away with it too if it weren't for your damn nose. That's so hype. I love that Tanjiro unlocked a new sword from defeating this boss. I mean, it looks like a piece of shit, but it's still hype. Tanjiro san, chodo katana ga utte moraizu komatte da desho? Kore Tanjiro san morate yu janai desho ka? Oh, I'm so excited for Tanjiro to use this ancient ass sword. I like how they actually behave like kids who just found a really cool sword. Tanjiro's just like, no, I shouldn't take it. That wouldn't be right. While still being like, mm, okay, yeah, I want to see it move. This is the problem with having your secret village tucked away in the mountains. You've got all these people sheltered from the outside world, forced to wear masks all day. Of course they're gonna be insane. Haganezuka-san wa kusugurareru to shibashi guttari shimasu no de watashi kara setsumei shimashio. Haganezuka-san wo yurushite yatte kudasai ne. Tanjiro, just go buy a sword somewhere else. Or learn how to fight hand to hand, I don't know. Having to put up with all these lunatics is not worth getting a sword that's just gonna break by the end of this season. Why are we playing the dramatic music here? This is literally a filler sword. The guy was just like, here, take this sword while I go polish up the good one. And Tanjiro was just like, wow. Almost good sword. Tanjiro, why would you be friends? The friendliest thing this guy has done is throw his teeth at you. Oh my god, I completely forgot about that. Holy shit, I didn't realize he broke his arm. That's hardcore. Why is Tanjiro also kind of psychotic? We are not friends. You broke my arm. Aw, oh, come on, best buddy. You totally deserved it. I was in a cast for three months. I couldn't provide for my family. My mother almost starved to death. Well, maybe her son will remember who he's fucking with next time. Oh. Tanjiro kept the tooth? I was joking when I said he threw it at you in an act of kindness. Why does Tanjiro have the social skills of SpongeBob SquarePants? Also, is this guy growing teeth? <laughs> is that the implication here? Why does he have all of his teeth back? Is he like, is this guy part demon? That would be wild. <laughs> that would be utterly crazy. <laughs> Yo, yo, did this show just make a fucking vase scary? That's so sick. 
That's some like grade A Japanese ghost movie stuff right there. I got genuine chills from that. I am very impressed. <laughs> Wow. Wow. That was masterful. That was so hype. This is like, I don't, I don't know. This is like genuinely like the peak of what I want out of like Japanese horror. Just a spooky ornamental vase in the middle of a pathway that sucks a man into it. That's so cool. <laughs> Oh, and he's got the he's got the blood coming out of his eye mouths. That's so good. I mean, yeah, that's where the blood would come out of. But for, uh, that little detail is so sick for some reason. I wonder why mountain swordsmiths are like not fit for consumption. Is it kind of like how it's a war crime to shoot medics on a battlefield? Like for some reason, swordsmiths are off limits to demons. <laughs> <laughs> oh wait, yeah, how did they find this village? This village's whole gimmick is that it's like unbelievably secretive and they just like, they just show up. I am so excited to see what this weird old man can do though. Like the fact that he's this frail, cowering old man of a demon has me so hyped to see what he actually can do. Aniki. Oh wait, is he a twin? Do you notice they didn't show his mouth in any of those shots? I wonder if he's a twin and that explains the tooth thing. Cause he's, I think this one's, this one. I think he's also wearing a different outfit than when Tanjiro just spoke with him. Okay, but that doesn't really work if he's already breathing out of his mouth. You know how my Black Clover videos, I said that my new kink is seeing people just be nice to Asta? Let's throw seeing people get hyped over Tanjiro's positivity on that list, too. <laughs> oh, big stretch. <laughs> This is cinema. This is pure cinema at its finest. <laughs> oh my god, he's just walking into their house. Okay, cool. <laughs> that happened a lot faster than I thought it would, but whatever, let's get the fighting going. I guess that makes sense. It's only an 11 episode season, but still, I thought I'd have to wait at least until like episode four before they start actually fighting someone. Oh my god, the season's animation is gonna be insane. God, that was already so cool. Is this guy? Is this guy the same? Don't actually answer me if it's a spoiler or something. But no, there's no way this is a spoiler. However, I do just want to remind everybody, uh, as I should with each Demon Slayer video, please no spoilers in the comments. Is this guy the same type of breathing style as Giyu, because isn't Giyu also like a mist breather? Regardless, it looks great. It looks absolutely fantastic. Oh shit, Nezuko can transform at will now? That's sick. Also, I love how Tanjiro and Tokido are coming in with their like fancy breathing techniques and neither of them can hit this guy. Here comes Nezuko from downtown with one of her famous kicks. That's all it takes, dude. Everyone's always underestimating Nezuko's taijutsu. That is sick that she can transform whenever she wants now, though. Like, I'm glad we're not going through this whole process of like, how did I do that? Like, what what if I what if I can control this someday? Like, cool, she transformed. Now, now it's unlocked. <laughs> Oh my god, he grew a body! Oh my god, he grew a hot body! He turned into Joe from Skate the Infinity! Cut him some more, maybe the other one will turn into Cherry! <laughs> yeah, 
yo, this is the most Demon Slayer is back shot that they could have possibly gone with. This is why Demon Slayer is so hype and why I'm so on board with 11 episode seasons. They just cut right to the good stuff. <laughs> Oh my god, he has a fucking gun! We can just roll up with shotguns? What are we even using swords for? Why do we travel all the way into the mountains for a new sword? We can just pick up a gun at Walmart. <laughs> I like how that one's spawning a tracksuit. Why do they grow new clothes too? Are they like the demon at different points in his life? Like, maybe that one's the demon during the 80s when he joined the Italian Mafia. <laughs> oh, an immediate disaster! That's also what's cool about the 11 episode seasons, is that, like, every demon they fight now is just, like, the immediate boss demon. You know, like, we don't have to watch Tanjiro go through any intermediary demons. The first one that shows up in this season is like an absolute nightmare. <laughs> oh my god, every part they chop off of him grows a new body. Considering the only way to kill a demon is to chop them up, this seems like objectively the best power for a demon to have, right? <laughs> and now the koi fish are rebelling. What the fuck is even happening anymore? This thing looks crazy. I kind of love this CGI. I know I'm gonna sound like a total Demon Slayer fanboy, and newsflash, I am one, but I think this is the first time I've ever seen a CGI character model in a 2D anime and thought it looked better than it would if it was done in 2D. Like, look at how weird and scary this fucking thing looks. You think this would look anywhere near as disturbing if it was done in the same style as all the other demons? Like, it looks so weird and cool, and it works too, because it's also well animated. Like, it's not just a weird, janky, and like, slow CG model, like, thrown in on top of this 2D world like most anime do. It like, moves really well, the lighting looks great on it, like it fits into this atmosphere. Its eyes, its glassy fucking eyes, have like, the forest reflected off of them. And again, it's- it almost feels like it's CG to make it feel more disturbing. Like, I can't imagine this koi fish would be that hard to animate. Like, at least compared to anything else in here. Like, it feels intentional, and also, it has the same, like, line thickness differences that all the other characters do. Have you noticed that? Like, it's got the same, like, its, its outer lines vary in thickness so that it matches the art style of all the other character models. Like, it's just... Clearly some thought and effort has gone into this fucking fish. <laughs> Let's go, I love seeing Tanjiro change people's worldviews. That shit's like crack to me. And that is episodes 2 and 3 of Demon Slayer Season 3. Like I said, I'm sure people are gonna like, roast me in the comments of being a fanboy, um, over that fish monologue. But like, God forbid, I like the thing I like. Like, really cool season so far. The, like, old man demon that not only, like, grows a new body every time you cut him up, but each new body has new powers too. That's awesome. That's so cool. I like that each one is seemingly, like, tied to an emotion. I hope... I don't know how they're gonna kill it. I'm assuming... It's gonna be like, you just have to keep cutting him until he gets younger and younger and now you're just fighting demon babies. I kinda hope that's not the case. It'd be cool if it was something a little more clever, but it's like, I'm so hyped. And on top of that, they're fighting four demons right now who are all just one demon and the, like, the vase demon hasn't even shown up. Like, uh, the climax of this season is gonna be crazy. I, hopefully, at least. I just can't imagine 
this season not ramping things up even beyond season two just with the setup they've given us but anyway as always let me know in the comments what you thought of this video let me know what you thought of these two episodes as well I love the pacing. Let me know which of the upper six has been your favorite so far. Let me know which of the Hashira have been your favorite so far. And as always, I will see you guys next time. How's it going, boys, girls, and squirrels? And welcome back to more Demon Slayer. We are now at the midpoint of season three, and it's funny because I've been hearing a lot of people say that this season is kind of slower than they were expecting it to be. I've heard people complain about the pacing. Some people say that there's not as much going on as they'd like there to be. And to that I say, could you give it a single second? We're on episode four and we're already fighting the boss of this season. Like, how much faster you want this thing to cook? Me being an unapologetic Demon Slayer fanboy aside, I actually do understand the criticisms. I don't agree with some people saying that it feels like this season is taking like two minute scenes and stretching them to 30 minutes. Like I don't get, I don't really get that vibe that I do from some other anime, but I get where people are coming from. Demon Slayer has kind of turned into the show where the characters will visit a village and there will be a fight in that village and that's the season. And it was hype in season two because people were excited about the idea of the entire season just being a well-animated fight scene. But I think now that we've done that in season two and then season three has come along and it's kind of just a different flavor of season two, people are starting to get a bit wary of it. it hasn't really affected me, at least not yet, uh, because I still think that what's going on is like the best version of what could be going on. You know what I mean? Demon Slayer has always excelled at telling a simple but very well-written story. You know, the characters and themes are still just as enjoyable and complex as they were when I fell in love with them in Mugen Train. But anyway, if I'm being honest, this is all stuff I should be saving for the end of the video. Enough of this preamble, let's get into it. <laughs> Yo, honestly, this kid should be embarrassed he almost died to this koi fish. You almost died fighting a fish on land. Have some fucking dignity. Just because it's got arms and legs doesn't make that situation any less embarrassing. Alright, that'd be like a man beating a shark to death in water. <laughs> Jesus Christ, I get it, you got a fat CGI budget this season. I don't need you flexing your beef stew rendering technology at me. <laughs> yeah, it's embarrassing. <laughs> Sorry, kid, I've called the Hashira much worse. Also, if you didn't want to be called seaweed head, you shouldn't have gotten that jellyfish ass haircut. <laughs> Are we ever gonna get an explanation on why some characters have bird's nests for eyes? This girl has white pupils. It looks like I could crawl inside of them and meet my other mother on the other side. Oh my god, at first I read that as don't talk or I'll bite your tongue. That was weird. I must be horny or something. Also, weird for the beginning of this episode to focus on Tokido. I wonder what Tanjiro's up to. Oh, that's right, shitting his pants. God, I love how terrifying this demon is. Oh my god, did you see that smile? That is the same insane smile Tengen had when fighting Gyotaro. Remember when I said all Hashira are at least a little bit insane? Tanjiro's on his way. I am considering this moment part of Tanjiro's character development. Kid just unlocked Hashira levels of insanity. <laughs> Tanjiro, swing earlier! There is no reason you shouldn't be able to knock this bird out of the sky. He's not even attacking you from behind. Try throwing a stone at him or something. You may even kill a second bird doing that. <laughs> you too? You too what? Is that why you couldn't hit him? 
You were too busy thinking of a comeback? Tanjiro, that didn't even make any sense. The demon goes, make that joyful blood spray. And then Tanjiro goes, you too. I guess it makes sense. I guess grammatically, it technically makes sense. <laughs> it's not very clever, though. <laughs> yeah, right after your track and field meet? This guy looks ready to coach a high school volleyball team. What is this design? Get ready to see every Planet Fitness personal trainer cosplaying as this guy at the next anime expo. <laughs> <laughs> Bringing a shotgun to a sword fight has to be the most big dick energy move imaginable. Genya's like Goku charging a spirit bomb, except when the planet lends him their energy, it goes straight to his dick. <laughs> I feel like that's super not how a shotgun works. I don't think it'd just throw his head back. If anything, it'd blast the top of it off. What are you shooting, tiny fists? <laughs> this dude must come, spirit bombs, for how much energy is in his big dick. <laughs> Nezuko, don't you literally have magic? Throw some blood demon arts at this guy or something. Don't let him walk all over you. <laughs> Nezuko, don't let this guy walk all in you. Oh, this dude just put Nezuko on and laced her up like she was a fucking Nike. He said, let me slip into something a little more comfortable, and that something was Nezuko. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Nezuko took that like a fucking champ. He just cracked her wrist into dust and she was just like, nah. <laughs> Dog, who the fuck do you think you're kicking? Did you forget you were dealing with the world champion demon soccer player Nezuko Messi? <laughs> Oh, that's so sick. Okay, right. I forgot that Nezuko's demon art was igniting her blood. I forgot. I forgot that was a crucial part of her doing magic. <laughs> Nezuko got so lucky that that worked. I assume the demon was the one that made the fan powerful, not the fan itself. Would've been super embarrassing if Nezuko tried that and it just flapped a little wind back at him. <laughs> Oh my god, that's like the worst place to get stabbed. Oh my god, the second and third worst places to get stabbed. Oh, right through the shin. Jesus Christ, people are really going through with this episode. Oh, look at Tanjiro putting his bird knowledge to work. Didn't know he had any, but that's fine. Everyone's got to have their hobbies. Again, really bold of you to assume there isn't just magic going on here. Yeah, or maybe he just knew chicken feet were impervious to lightning. It could be. Did you think about that? I don't know. Ask the fucking bird expert over here. <laughs> oh, they got 420'd! <laughs> Jesus Christ, now the fish are revolting? We got enough on our plate here without having to worry about the political unrest of the koi fish community. Oh, what a dapper little crow. Oh, let's go. I love it when the Hashira get involved. Oh, yeah. 
ひどい箱ぼれだ Yeah, because you guys make shitty so You know what? I'm not even getting into it. Hio to you too, little pot. Oh my god, from that angle, Tokido looks like a new Sonic the Hedgehog character. He looks like what would happen if somebody drew fan art of Silver the Hedgehog as a person. He looks like Goku Super Saiyan 3 going Super Saiyan Blue. <laughs> We get it, you got two mouths, no need to flex. What determines which mouth you speak out of? He switched mid-sentence, it didn't even affect how he sounded. Do you do it just to remind people you have two mouths, you fucking douche? Does her sword extend, or is it just the way it's animated? Kinda looks like she's using a whip right now, doesn't it? God, this demon is single-handedly keeping the porcelain industry alive. This guy could be running the most profitable arts and craft shop in Japan if he would just stop eating people. Oh, you want to try that one again, Bozo? <laughs> Oh my god, her sword is flaccid. You're gonna give this girl a flaccid sword? What is this, a joke? Why does the mangaka keep insisting that demon slayers don't have powers? This is a fucking magic sword. Like, what sword turns into a ribbon? There aren't buttons on the handle or anything. They're not even trying to make this kind of make sense. <laughs> Oh, that musical sting was sick. What type of Hashira is this girl again? All she talks about is love. What is she using? Smooch breathing? Oh, take it easy, guys. <laughs> Mitsuri, this guy's on death's door and your boobs just suffocated the cameraman. Don't get too flattered here. <laughs> Fish are attacking the village right now. Everybody get their priorities back on track. Nesco, it's okay. Don't worry. Don't hit your hand. Don't hit your hand. Don't hit your hand. Tanjiro, quit barking orders at her. Maybe she has a plan. Oh, never mind. I hate this plan. Oh, I hate him using his little baby hand to rub his chin. At least use your arm hands. I don't like seeing you use your hair hands as anything other than hair. Jesus Christ, I don't even know how to form a sentence when talking about this guy anymore. The man lives in a vase. You don't think he's got at least a couple of art degrees under his belt? <laughs> Oh my god! I'm constantly forgetting that Demon Slayer is like the most grotesque show that I've ever watched. Ready? Here come all the comments now. You think this is grotesque? JoJo's makes this show look like it's PG. That's sick. That's super cool. I don't care. <laughs> Oh, I do love his little claps, though. I gotta give that to him. I can listen to him clap those little baby hands for hours. Oh, the music drop was great. Hey, why is Tokido actually listening to this demon's presentation? This demon was like, hey, before we fight, do you want to see my art? And Tokido goes, sure. <laughs> Maybe he was just trying to buy time to come with a better threat than that. Probably should have let the demon show him a few more art pieces. That would need some more time in the oven to cook. 
It's like so hard to tell what expression this guy's making at any given time. Like, look at him furrowing his mouth and gritting his eyeballs. You really want to talk about people having body parts where they shouldn't be? Aw, oh, poor... <laughs> whatever his name is. <gasps> oh, poor Tokido! Oh, that's badass! Really channeling the Haku arc from Naruto here. I like how he has his sword raised to block, but seemingly deflected none of the needles. <laughs> what? Why didn't you do that the first time? Tokido, could you have this dramatic flashback later? You're still fighting this guy. I want him to come back from this flashback with another dozen needles stuck inside of him. Like, that's why he got the first batch in him. He was just zoned out when it happened. <laughs> I feel like I'm missing something about this guy's concept. I get that he's pots. I get that he's baby hands. I get that he summons fish. But like, like why though? Why those three things? Am I dumb? Am I missing some sort of connection here? I just don't see how all of those connect. I feel like that'd be if Rengoku looked the way he did, but his power was to summon rhinoceroses. <laughs> Oh, let's go! Oh, I fucking love when characters combine powers. Tanjiro just unlocked Exploding Blood Sword, and people have the nerve to call this show dull. Well, Alright, you can't just throw a ponytail on Tanjiro's regular hair and call that a new character design. What the fuck? They cropped Rengoku! Gyu gets to be in the frame, but they cropped Rengoku out of it? What? Who okayed this image? Why wouldn't they just stack him behind Zenitsu? Yo! It is always funny to me, though, when anime characters come up with their attack names on the spot like this. Like, imagine if Tanjiro was just awful at improv. He no kami kagura! Fight! Fight! St st I stab you! <laughs> So cool! Oh my god, he's fire, then he's a dragon, then he's a boy! This is like the spider fight from season one to its fullest potential. Oh, and they even did my joke! There's those awful improv skills I was looking for. Oh, Tanjiro just unlocked self-confidence. Some would say an ability... Even more powerful than exploding blood sword. But some would be fools! Yo, let's give it up to Genya for being the off-screen badass of this season. Oh, let's give it up to Genya for being a fucking demon! Oh, that's crazy. He didn't have a twin, he grew his teeth back. And that is episodes four and five of Demon Slayer season three. Still, like, pretty great. I think people forget that season two didn't really become amazing until the second half. And like, honestly, it was like two or three people I saw saying that this season is slow. It's not even like, that's not even real news. It was just something interesting I heard that I wanted to bring up. But no, I, yeah, I think it's pretty dope. I do, I wanna see more of Genya, which is looking like we're about to. I wanna see more of him. And I do kind of hope this upper moon demon isn't done just because 
it, it feels pretty fast that this guy got cooked, you know? Which I could see being a flaw of this season. What, what I liked about season two was that it did take like all season to finish off Gyotaro and Daki, which is what made it feel like such a masterclass in pacing. Like the fact that they were able to make that fight just keep on escalating and it never got old, in my opinion at least, was what made season two so great. But if it's just, if it's just this like multi like healing demon gets cooked in the first half and then the pot demon gets cooked in the second half, we'll see. Like we didn't really get a ton of time with, uh, I, I don't even know his name. I don't even know his name. We didn't get a lot of time with whatever demon just got beheaded four times this episode. But regardless, uh, an awesome batch of episodes. Let me know in the comments what you thought of them. Uh, let me know, as always, which jokes were your favorite from this episode. It helps me make TikToks and reels and shorts and whatever. And I will see you all next time. How's it going, boys, girls, and squirrels, and welcome to episode six and seven of Demon Slayer season three. Where last we left, I believe Tokido is drowning, and uh, Genya's a demon. So, you know, things have been better. But things have been worse, you know? So, let's keep an open mind, you negative Nancys. Tanjiro's been through a lot worse. You kidding me? What's he fighting? Four, maybe five demons? Get out of here, that's nothing. He's gonna make it. Everyone's gonna make it. Everything's going to be fine. Come on, it's not like Demon Slayer's ever hit us with a tragedy before. <laughs> anyway, enough stalling. Let's get into it. Alright, Tanjiro, great start, but let's, uh... You know, let's start cutting up some demons, huh? Clearly taking their heads off didn't work, but I don't see any reason to start acting like a quitter here. Let's see you bust out that new move you've been working on. You know, Hinokami Kagurai Woodchipper. What? It is not pointless. Tanjiro, start dicing them up. They can't fight back right now. Why is everybody taking a little time out right now and letting them regenerate? Oh shit! Wait, but the fifth demon's Genya, though, right? Or is there another emotion demon? How about not to mention his eyes are blacker than the cruelest knight? God, what a good boy. I love how he's like, so, you wanna run for Hashira, kid? Well, Nezuko and I got your back. Now, with elections right around the corner, it's gonna be tough to get you in the public eye. But if we start targeting those swing villages hard, I think you got a real fighting shot, kid. Oh, guard down. Guard obliterated. That's embarrassing. That's an intimate moment they just shared there. Genya just got lost in Tanjiro's eyes mid-choking him. That's a tough time to get lost in someone's eyes. Genya must have a lot of questions about himself right now. Tanjiro, take a whiff right in front of you. Either that or just look. Look with your eyes. Oh my god, so it's not Genya? Wait, so is Genya not a full demon? I'm so confused. No. No, please! Anything but Nezu- Oh, what a nice little pot. <laughs> It never fully occurred to me that if you take away a Hashira's breath, they're like fucked. Like, I don't know, for some reason, I always thought the breathing techniques were like a full body technique, you know? I didn't realize they were actually entirely reliant on the user's ability to inhale. <laughs> Oh shit, did Nezuko permanently curse his sword? I thought he lost the demon magic when the flames went out. Can he just ignite it whenever now? Oh 
Yeah, it's called being a shonen protagonist at the climax of a fight. Wounds kind of stop mattering once the writers want a fight to end. Oh, blast him! Shoot this little gremlin! Yo, these swords suck! Oh, crazy! Genya's related to that dude? Whoa, weird. I don't know if I knew that or not. Is having a shitty father, like, a requirement for becoming a Hashira? Oh, there's the reason the dude's so angry, he's got seven fucking kids. The guy probably just can't afford enough food, he's over here like, Please, just let me stomp one of these kids out, this is too many mouths to feed! Wakatta. Alright, Kenya, I'm off to look for mom. I'm leaving you in charge of our siblings while I'm gone. Now, what don't I want to see when I get back? Five little corpses? Five little corpses, that's exactly right. Alright, I'll be back. Oh, immediately four corpses! That's okay, Kenya, you're still under your allotted amount of corpses. Oh yeah, it's one of them ceiling wolves. You know, one of those wolves that bust into your house, kill your whole family, and then stalk you from the corner of your ceiling. Oh god damn it, is that one dead too? Put pressure on their wounds? Dog, they are the wounds! There are more wounds than people in this room! The wounds are gonna have to put pressure on them! Oh, fucking stellar job, dude! That's hype! I can't believe this kid actually killed the demon! Oh, fucking stellar job, dude. I can't believe this kid actually killed his mother. Oh my god, devastating backstory happening right now. Oh, whoa, that's brutal. Poor both of these kids. That's tough. That's tough from every angle you look at it. I get the confusion. Believe me, I do. But Kenya, you still gotta give this kid props for taking down this whole ass demon. Yeah, no, I picked up on that pretty quickly. Was this show afraid that people wouldn't pick up on that? Or that people wouldn't realize that Genya knew his mistake by now? Show has very little faith in its audience, clearly. Honestly, probably pretty bad. Not gonna sugarcoat it. He probably didn't love that sequence of events. What? Since when is that a rule? Tanjiro's had intimate conversations with every one of the Hashira, and he's like six months into his Demon Slayer career. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely hole punched. Oh my god. Genya's ready to slot himself into a three ring binder over here. Tanjiro, at this point, you at least have to be questioning what Genya is, right? He looks like a marshmallow peep somebody dropped into a rat cage. This is not human behavior. <laughs> Oh, he's running! He's running! Look at him go! <laughs> Yo. Oh, that was cold. 
those blue lock levels of cold. This dude appearing behind Tanjiro with just the subtitle hatred showing up. That was clean. That was real clean. <laughs> Something that's weird about Demon Slayer is that it has such clever action sequences. Demons with such unique and creative abilities. But at the end of the day, a lot of fights will just boil down to neck thickness. It's just weird that so much of the action in Demon Slayer is like strategy and tactics and like using your abilities in creative ways to best your opponent. But then it'll just resort to some power level bullshit by the end. Like I feel like if a Demon Slayer can make it to a demon's neck, they like that should be the win condition. And it's like, oh, but that would just make it too easy make it harder to get to their neck. Or they also do something cool where most of the time their head w won't be the head that you think it is. You know what I mean? Like Tanjiro will behead a demon, but oh, it turns out you also have to cut off the sister's head at the same time, or the demon's head isn't the real head, the like front of a train is. Like that is a better way of extending fights than just being like, Oh, my sword doesn't cut through his neck for some reason. Okay, you know what though? I'll give him this. This show does tension and like panic really well. Holy shit, he pulled out a wood-style summoning jutsu. Um, excuse you? Are you sure hypocrite isn't written on your tongue? All demons do is torment the weak. <laughs> <laughs> I like your pigtails, sir. This guy looks sweet. This guy looks like a Dragon Ball character. He looks like Kaba if Kaba had an interesting design. Oh, he's a fusion Dragon Ball character. I don't know why, but he kind of reminds me of the Chinese god Niza. He like doesn't even look like Niza, but it's less his look and more his vibe. You know, like a really lean, younger guy with like slim armor and this giant wheel behind him. Oh god, boy did he! Just sucked him right up like they were a delicious smoothie. It's cool that the anger demon absorbed the others to become hatred. I wonder if they always become the hatred demon whenever they fuse or if it's because the anger one initiated it. You know, like, I wonder if, if the sorrow demon absorbed the others, if he'd become, like, devastation, or if the, if the pleasure one did it, he'd become ecstasy. If they ever do a video game with, like, what-if characters, like the Raging Blast games did, I would love to see the full power versions of these emotion demons. <laughs> Great transformation. Really cool, really subtle transformation. That's another cool idea that they kind of borrowed from Dragon Ball. I like the idea that this demon at its peak form is a kid. I mean, when you boil it down, this guy's just Majin Buu. He's absorbing people, he's splitting apart, he's, he's, his final form is a child. But there's something really cool about a kid being more intimidating than an adult. At least in anime, in live action, it'd be dumb as hell. It does help a lot that kids in anime are drawn like 26-year-old bodybuilders. <laughs> Oh, a small and weak being? This dude split apart into four separate demons that terrorized an entire village. Alright, let's not act like he's Stuart Little or anything. It's also weird that the hatred demon has, like, a moral compass and a sense of justice. I guess hatred needs to be motivated by something, so it's kind of cool that, like, 
the hatred demon needs to like find reasons to hate his opponent like hatred is a lot more personal than anger you know so it's kind of cool that they're working that into his personality <laughs> Yo, honestly, I know everybody would hate this, but I would be kind of down for Tanjiro to defeat this demon through sheer positivity. Like, I'd be so into Tanjiro beating this guy by changing his worldview, like, logicking him into submission. And it makes sense, too. Like, what better way to beat the hatred demon than through Tanjiro's positivity? And plus... It wouldn't even be that underwhelming because we still have the pot demon to give us like an epic final battle of this season. I think it'd be kind of cool that this demon screwed itself over by becoming the hatred demon because Tanjiro is so positive. Like all the other emotions, Tanjiro couldn't beat, but he could beat hatred. Man, Tokido's really going through it, isn't he? This poor kid looks like a wet porcupine. He's been drowning for like three episodes now. Oh, thank God. I'm so glad that didn't work. I was gonna be so mad if the show was just like, okay, I know he couldn't break through the bubble before, but, but like now he can. This is what I'm talking about. I love seeing Tanjiro's positive effect on people. You know how fucking good you have to be for people to start seeing motivational ghosts of you before you die? <laughs> Yo, honestly, good point. If I saw this wiggly arm tornado poking through my doorway, I would have that meat cleaver so far deep into my trachea. Hmm. Ooh, he gave a sassy little smirk there. <laughs> Oh, hello, Mr. Hagen Nezuka. More like hide him from Nezuko. I didn't realize we had a Pantene shampoo model under that mask. Hey, Mr. Swordsmith, I got a stone you can wet and grind your blade against. <laughs> Just do that thing where you clap all your little hands together. That's pretty distracting. <laughs> Oh, I like this little arc Tokido is going through about like accepting others' help. You know what's especially sad about this? Is that even though Tokido is saying like, I don't want anyone to come and save me or like, no one can come and save me because I'm the strongest. The fact that his subconscious conjured this ghost Tanjiro to be like, you're going to be okay, someone's going to come save you. Like, that's devastating. That means he clearly secretly wants to get saved, but doesn't want to get his hopes up and believe that someone will come and get him. Like, it means he isn't emotionally ready to come to terms with the fact that he needs help. And he's, like, afraid of disappointing himself if he believes that someone will come. <laughs> Oh my god! This thing looks like the grubbiest little French waiter. Mmm, your escargot is ready, sir. God, look at his gross little human feet, too. <laughs> like, don't die to this thing. Imagine dying to this thing. To Jacques the crab waiter. Imagine being that embarrassingly incompetent. Oh, he French kissed the bubble. He must have absorbed some of Jacques' powers when he stabbed him. That's super cool, actually. This is a cool plan that I'm pretty sure wouldn't work, right? Like, Tokido just took in a full breath of carbon monoxide, didn't he? Or carbon dioxide. One of those. Whatever, whatever we fucking breathe. Tanjiro. 
僕の父は君と同じ赤い瞳の人だった。What is the implication here? I shouldn't have to say this. But don't tell me in the comments. That's crazy. There's no, there's no way. Are they related? Are they actually related? Or maybe they're just from like the same clan. That's wild, either way.、Uh, but that is also episodes, oh God, six and seven of Demon Slayer. Good stuff, as always.、Um, Tokido's finally. Out of his bubble, which is sweet. I'm excited for him to have like a full on fight with the pot demon now. I'm also excited for the hatred demon. <laughs> That's super hype. I don't. I guess Mitsuri is just like dealing with the fish in the town. That's whatever. It's weird. So, are the fish coming from the pot demon? I would assume so. What a weird additional power that he has. But anyway, as always, let me know in the comments what you thought of these two episodes. Let me know what your favorite jokes from this video were as well.、Um, and let me know what you thought of the video. And I will see you guys next time. How's it going, boys, girls, and squirrels? We're back watching Demon Slayer. Things are looking up from where last we left. Tokido's coming out of his bubble and he's doing just fine. Tanjiro's gotta be damned because he's. Fighting some wood dragons. Couldn't really make that work in the context of Mr. Brightside. That's fine. No one's really coming here for my creativity anyway. I know you guys just use me as a bootleg way to watch Demon Slayer Season 3 for free. It's fine. I'm not even hurt about it. Let's move on. <laughs> Oh, we're finally addressing the needle sticking out of your face? Honestly, you'd been in that bubble for so long, I genuinely forgot they were even poisoned. Oh god, here comes the rest of the French wait staff. I'm sure they're dangerous, but this is such a less intimidating threat than the giant fish we were dealing with earlier. Casa! This chick's dead. You kidding me? It's the year 1912 and she's got a fever and a backstory. Alright, that's not something people bounce back from. <laughs> Dog, you're cooking her! Get that blanket off! <laughs> Dog, she's freezing. Get her another blanket. <laughs> Real tough. Real tough series of events to happen in one day. God, that is rough. Look at him back when he only had two little hair tails, too. What does he grow a new one each year starting at age 10? What? What a horrible way to let us know that he has a twin who's gonna die a year after this. Side with Muichiro, but we've got some excellent points being made from both parties here. First off, what a horrible name. Second, that absolutely rocked my understanding of the Japanese language. I thought I vaguely knew how Japanese names worked. Not the case. That made almost no sense to me. The Mu in Muichiro stands for incompetence. I just don't understand how that can be the case. <laughs> Cute matching rompers, guys. Really making it easy to tell you two apart right now. Oh, wild. Is this how he gets recruited into the Hashira? I I feel like demons existing isn't a very exciting revelation to have. That's not like, oh my god, can you believe superheroes exist? It's more like, hey, did you hear demons are real and probably so is hell? That sucks. What a terrifying thing to learn one day. At age 11. 
選ばれた人間にしかできないんだ先祖が剣士だったからって子供の俺たちに何ができる No, yeah, but like that's kind of what he's trying to tell you. I'm pretty sure you two are chosen ones. This woman came down from the mountains and was like, you two are descendants of powerful swordsmen. And this guy's like, okay, yeah, but like, doesn't mean we're chosen or anything. <sighs> Listen, I still maintain that the CGI looks good, but this has almost entirely become a full CGI show. That water looked entirely real. This spoon he's holding is CGI right now. The background is CGI. Tokido is the only 2D thing in this entire environment. It works and it looks fine. I'm, I'm just saying they are starting to push what you can call a 2D show. <gasps> Whoa, wow, that was horrifying. I love a like reverse jump scare, like a silent jump scare, like a like a cringe scare. Cause I guess you don't jump, right? You just kind of sink in and do one of these. That was so like the fact that there was ambient sound that got sucked away when the scare showed up made it so much cooler than if there was like a loud musical stinger because it like focuses on the horror of not noticing something threatening in your presence. You know what I mean? Like the horror of that moment was that there is this dangerous creature in the room with them and they almost didn't notice it at all. Rather than the horror of something just loud and jumping out at you. Okay, wow, fuck me, that was brutal. You see, and what's so great about that moment is that it really hones in on the fear of having your brother's severed arm whiz past your head. Not a lot of movies or shows are willing to go that far, but you know, that's just, that's just a really specific and niche brand of horror that I think needs to be uh, represented a bit more. <laughs> Okay, right? This whole background right now is completely CGI. But it looks amazing and it's totally unintrusive. Like, you wouldn't even notice if you weren't specifically looking for it. I'm totally cool with entire backgrounds being fully CGI if it's integrated well. It's just when we start getting characters like interacting with CG objects or entire character models being 3D that things start to feel a little wacky and intrusive. <laughs> Holy farm tools, Tokido! What the fuck did you do to him? This is such an abstract crime scene that I can't even piece together in my mind how this fight went down. Even with the full capacity of my imaginative abilities, I cannot fathom how somebody would end up in this position. If Yuichiro is dead right now, it's gonna be the least shocking reveal in anime history. He spent the whole night working on that fucking modern art installation. Meanwhile, your brother is stuck in the cabin trying to scoop all the blood back into the top half of his bicep. Oh my god, he's actually alive. That's actually way more shocking than if he was dead. Muijiro, buddy, I promise you, you do not want to be in the room right now. This is going to fuck you up way harder than if you walked in on your brother already dead. To be perfectly clear though, you getting in his way kind of saved his life. Ruined your guitar playing career, but saved your brother for sure. Oh, that just fucked me up so hard! Why was that the perfect end to that sentence? Come on, 
Oh, that's right. This guy's still at it. Just let him cook, dude. Like, you're telling me at this point you don't just want to see how the sword turns out? Are you smiling or frowning right now? Because your mouth eye is frowning, but your eye mouths are smiling. So what the fuck is going on right now? Did another one of these goddamn swords just fucking break? Is that what I just saw? Because I better not have. Also, great call on the tentacle attack. That's way cooler than the French waiters you've been throwing at him. <laughs> Yo, the grind don't stop, dude. The grindstone does not stop. You either live by the grind or die behind. That's just a swordsman way, baby. Oh, he gave a nervous Hyo! I didn't like that. Hyo should only be happy. Oh, clean! Tactical! Precise! That was slick as hell. I love how his tiny hands came in to cover it, like, oh, oh, my little neck! God, the colors of this show are so good. The colors of Tokido's misbreathing look so good against the colors of the tentacles. And I also like how each season has kind of had its own, like, color palette, sort of. Like, season one felt very identifiable because it had a lot of, like, purples and pinks, Although, that could just be because the most memorable part of season one was the Rui fight. Season two had a lot of purples and greens, but like, a different shade of purple. Not like Nezuko's fire purple, like Daki's outfit purple. And then this season is very identifiable, because it's a lot of like, cold, cold blues and like, shocking yellows. I just like that it isn't just a dark forest, like the cold color palette really makes this location feel unique and, like, visually stimulating. Look, I'm gonna level with you here. I'm, t I'm taking that fucking head off. I like how Tokido just unlocked Adderall breathing. I can't believe it took nine episodes into this season for somebody to finally bring up Gyoko's appearance. But like, that's all you got? He's creepy? Lay into him, Tokido. I had like a dozen insults for this guy right off the rip. Okay, here we go, and now we're cooking. Really just flaccid insults coming from Tokido right now, but I like where his head's at. Can't call it a roast without getting warmed up first, right? Yeah, alright, lay into his vase. I didn't even think of that. I was so joking before, by the way. I did not expect this to turn into an actual roast. This scene feels like it's pandering directly to me, and nobody else. Demon Slayer is giving me exactly what I asked for immediately after asking for it. <laughs> oh, it rattled him! Oh, not the 10,000 gliding slime fish! That... That's my favorite attack name I've ever heard. The Gliding Slime Fish sounds like a hockey team that's never won a game before. <laughs> this is why I hate poison attacks in shows. Because it never actually means anything. The only effect poison has during an anime fight is causing the main character to never shut up about being poisoned. And then by the end, they're just gonna bullshit the poison out of their system anyway. Just like, stop using it. I hate it. It only ever comes up when it's convenient, and then it's just gone when the writers choose to ignore it. <laughs> 
日輪刀で切られ、チリとなる前に、燃魚がまき散らす体液は毒だ。Oh, never mind, sick. Here comes more poison. 回転で全て弾き飛ばされた。Oh, why did you slip out of your skin? よけて木の上に逃げるのやめてくれないかな<笑>お前には私の真の姿を見せてやる。Oh, let's go, new form. That's super hype. はいはい。この姿を見せるのはお前で三人目。結構いるね。つまり。Yo roast his ass. Tokido more like Jokido. This dude's killing it. Tokido's over here just trying out material on this guy. He's relentless. If this slaying demons thing doesn't work out, he's got a great career on the open mic circuit ahead of him. この完全なる美しき姿に。ヒルスがいい。Let him have it. Let him have it, Tokido. Come on, what do you got? Flawless execution of the silent treatment, Tokido. Yo, tag me in. I got this one. Yoko looks like a mermaid tried to make a scarecrow. He looks like Raggedy Ann going through her goth fishnet phase. He looks like Coraline turned into a Hellboy monster. But most importantly, he looks wildly underwhelming. This is a way worse design than Baby Hands. I'm like, pretty disappointed. <laughs> Do his attacks <laughs> turn things to fish? Okay. All right, I respect the originality. Waiting for Tokido to just cough up a fish. Oh, he got me in the, oh, he got me in the lungs. <laughs> I have absolutely come around on the idea of Tokido. Between his killer stand up special and this badass backstory, he's like so much cooler than when we first met him. I don't want Tokido to die, but I would be lying if I said I didn't want to see his head replaced with a fish. <laughs> Oh, oh, okay. Holy shit, that was the first time a demon slayer has ever been scarier than a demon in this show. Huh? Yo, did Gyoko just die? Is that the end of Gyoko? That's ridiculous. I feel like he's barely been in the season. Oh, never mind. Fucking kill it. Kill it before the baby hands come back. Yo, excellent call. We need more of that energy in the Demon Slayer core. All right, Gyoko's dead. That's wild. That's wild that the emotion demon outlasted him. I get that Hunt Tengu is stronger than Gyoko. Like, he's number four and Gyoko's number five. But still, like, Gyoko was by far the more interesting of the two demons. Like, personality wise, at least, and design wise. So that's kind of a bummer that he's already dead. Like, I even, his powers were kind of even cooler, too. Also, I swear to God, if this fucking poison comes back now. <laughs> Yep, here we go. Fuck you, poison. Oh, look at Rengoku saving the day from the grave. God damn, I miss that flaming barn owl. Hold on. Oh, this is not a good sign. This is the kind of shit characters usually see right before they die in this show. Specifically if you're a Hashira. Arigato. Oh my god, meanwhile, Tanjiro is trying not to get devoured by a hundred wooden dragons. <laughs> Uh, 
This guy's got too many fucking abilities. How is this just the upper four? What could Doma possibly do that tops a sonic breathing dragon? Also, I just remembered, fucking Akaza's above this guy. This is way crazier than anything Akaza is capable of. <laughs> Oh my god, what the hell did you just cough up? That was not the color of the liquid I expected to come out of your mouth. Usually it's like red or white or blue. That shit was brown, dude. Oh, his poor socked little foot. Jesus, that thing broke from every possible angle. Oh, oh my god, the worst possible outcome. Holy shit, I did not expect it to eat him just then. <laughs> Can you just fucking summon some shadow clones already and bust out of this thing? This crunching noise is horrible. <laughs> Oh, let's go! I'm constantly forgetting Mitsuri exists. Yeah, you were cutting it close? Thing broke all of his bones! If anything, I'd say you were cutting it late! Yo, her whip sword is so sick. I love that some of the Hashira have different weapons aside from just regular, like, straight katanas. I mean, so far it's just Tengen and Mitsuri, but still, I appreciate the variety. And that is episodes 8 and 9, I believe. Yes, of Demon Slayer. Good episodes. Um, really good looking shit, but that's kind of to be expected at this point. Minor bummer, Gyoko doesn't get to live to the last two episodes. So like I said, he's just all around like the more interesting of the two demons, I would say. It's cool that this guy splits into mo like his power is cool, but coupled with his personality or multiple personalities, if you were, uh, it's just not as interesting as Gyoko. But regardless, I'm sure, like, the next two episodes are gonna be hype as hell as, like, most of the season has been already. But as always, let me know what you thought of this episode or these episodes in the comments below. Let me know what you thought of the video and comment your favorite jokes from the video down below as well. And I will see you all next time. How's it going, boys, girls, and squirrels, and welcome to the season three finale of Demon Slayer. Now, they've been hyping up for quite some time that the final episode of this season is going to be 70 minutes long. So I'm hoping that that means that it's gonna be like 30 or so minutes of just balls to the wall, intense, awesome action, and then like roughly 30 minutes of seasonal wrapping up and plot and such. Those numbers don't have to be exact, however, with this supersized final episode of the season, all I'm saying is that I'm hoping it's something special. But we'll never find out if we never get to it, so let's dive right into episode 10. What is a slip of a girl? Is that like an old-timey way of calling a girl promiscuous? Like saying hussy? You, you damn slippery bimbo! You damn soapy bitch! <laughs> Shameless tramps what pissed you off? What about when he called you a drippy slit or whatever he said before? <laughs> Yeah, now is definitely the time to work all this out. Oh, gross. Don't call it supple. Is that what supple means? Does supple mean flexible? I've only ever heard supple used in gross contexts.
What an absolute chump of a demon. This was such a god-level threat until Mitsuri showed up. This was so beyond anything Tanjiro was even close to capable of. And then Mitsuri just runs in like, Ugh, are you still fighting this guy? I feel like it's more likely that her tits absorb the impact of that blast. Oh, nice, Danny. Real mature joke. Who's joking? How does her tensing all of her muscles to keep her eardrums from bursting make any more sense than what I just said? Also, as if her boobs aren't the focal point of this entire shot. Oh my god, wait, was I right about her tits? What did that mean? I know he just complimented her body, but in what regard? Oh, alright, Demon Slayer, I see you with your film grain. Damn, the colors are stunning here. This looks great. This is some of the least bizarre hair I've seen in this entire show. What is this weird hair color based cast system going on in the Demon Slayer universe? Oh, is this what the demon was talking about? He meant he was strong for her build? I thought he was saying she had a great pair of yams! Oh yeah, such an unlovable, strong, big-boobed anime waifu you are. Well, I for one would never marry a woman who looked like an upside-down strawberry! Who's telling you you eat too much? Why would that even be a concern? It's not like you're gaining weight. What is it, a crop shortage thing? Is it a financial concern? Like people are afraid they're not gonna have enough food if they marry you? Girl, get snacking! Do not let a man dictate what you can and cannot munch. Nice. Alright, that's Mitsuri finished. Glad we got her whole arc all nice and wrapped up in like seven minutes. Oh, never mind, there's still more. Oh, I didn't know this daddy came with a side of sugar. Mitsuri's actual for real sugar daddy right here. Dude just handed her a present and then literally went, there's more where that came from if you play your cards right. What are you gasping for, Tanjiro? Like, how are you even gonna help? I kinda don't love the giant wood dragons, if I'm being honest. What was so cool about Mugen Train is that Akaza was so clearly above Tanjiro's level, but in such a grounded way. Like, Akaza was, like, physically strong, but he was mostly a lot of speed and a lot of skill. Like, you could see how Tanjiro, with enough training, could one day defeat Akaza. And at the time, he was like our benchmark of how powerful demons can become. So then every demon from that point on was kind of supposed to feel like an incremental like upgrade leading up towards Akaza's power level. But these wooden dragons are so over the top, so insanely powerful that I like don't buy that Tanjiro could ever even lay a scratch on one without another, like, four seasons worth of training. I just think this is an insanely strong power coming way too soon in Tanjiro's journey. Or at the very least, they're, like, too fucking big. Like, if each of the dragons were, like, the size of a dog or a wolf, I could buy that Tanjiro could kind of, like, hold his own against them. I, I'm, like, not completely buying that this demon hasn't just wipe Tanjiro out by now. 
Oh my god, everyone's got these little marks. What the hell are these marks? I didn't expect all the Hashira to have them too. Think of the tummy ache, Genya! This is too great a sacrifice! I won't let you go through with it! Oh, it slapped his little foot. By the way, didn't the demon like fucking mangle one of your feet earlier? What whatever happened to that? This damn slip of a demon. Don't run away from your responsibilities! What am I responsible for? Getting fucked! Oh my god, alright Genya, way to take the initiative. What an insane idea to just pop into your head like that. Even if I had super strength, throwing a tree at a man is never an option I would even consider I had. They just belong in the ground. I've just never seen somebody pick one up and be like, Well, you know what they say, trees are just nature's bazookas after all. Hey demon, nice to treat ya! <laughs> Oh, this is great. I love how Tanjiro's just starting to completely resent demons. I talked about this a lot in season two, but I love how Tanjiro started off with this like deep respect for demons and their plight, mainly because he knew how much Nezuko struggled with being one, but is slowly just losing all sympathy towards them. Sympathy and patience. Like I love seeing Tanjiro just get more and more bitter towards his enemy. I feel like if he didn't have Nezuko to constantly remind him that demons were once good people too, he would just lose sympathy for them entirely. Wow, incredible use of organs. Never thought I'd say that before, but I gotta call it like I see it. Did Genya's hair change? I just realized that Genya grew frosted tips. The tips of Genya's hair are literally going Super Saiyan right now. How has Tanjiro not noticed that this dude is a demon? To be fair though, I guess I also didn't notice the hair transformation. Alright, touche Tanjiro. <laughs> Oh, now with the feet? Really, Tanjiro? Now you can't plant your feet? Five minutes ago, you were acting like a professional foot gardener. Yo, is Tanjiro about to learn a thunder breathing technique? That'd be pretty crazy. I'm all for characters combining techniques. <laughs> Yo, they're doing Zenitsu's camera angle. Yo! Yo! Dude, shut the fuck up! Yo, that's literally everything I've ever wanted. In life, in this show, Everything. He just used thunder breathing to close the distance and then switched to fire breathing to slash the demon. That's perfect, dude. God, and then you could see the lightning like change into fire as he breathed it out. That's so sick, too, because since breathing styles are just like different forms of fighting, this doesn't feel like an out of nowhere overpowered ability. Like, it's not like Tanjiro literally just unlocked a new power out of nowhere. He just tried a technique that he'd seen his friend perform dozens of times before. <laughs> Oh, fuck off. Quit being such a little baby bitch demon and take your beheading already. Oh my god, never mind. I feel sorry for you. Oh, you poor little thing, you. Just like Ove Tanjiro. Oh, 
Oh my god, what? What, Kenya? Is that why he's part demon? Because he's been eating them? Is that how it works? Somebody, somebody please just have a sit down talk with Genya already. <laughs> that was the worst fucking noise. <laughs> oh my god. He's reached his final form. Trijiro! Dude, this season has obliterated Tanjiro's psyche. Tanjiro has gone full tilt Tengen levels of psychopath, and I am so on board. You can burn all the life preservers, set sail without doing a roll call, and trust in your heart of hearts that I am still on board. <laughs> I'm gonna need to see Trijiro from a different angle here. How is he stuck? Looks like somebody put glue on his tummy and just stuck him to a tree. Tanjiro! Holy fuck. Tokitoku. Arigato. Yo, there are too many hype things going on right now for me to even count, but I'll do my best to try. The sound design just always goes so hard. I love just like the silence and then the when he picks up the sword. The fact that Tokido just launched this sword at him from like a mile away. The fact that he gets back into thunder breathing stance and this crazy techno kicks in. Yo, take his fucking head off. I'm finally getting the desperation that I love from Demon Slayer so much that hasn't fully been present in this season. All it takes is something like that. Just, just the image of Tanjiro flying in like Raggedy Ann, just blood all over his face, screaming in rage at this demon. <laughs> This is the hypest music I've ever heard. God, I love Demon Slayer, dude. It feels like my blood is dancing right now. Does Nezuko not know that the sun can kill her? Why, why is she, like, waking up with some- with a case of the sleepy time blues right now? Like, why is she just sitting in this grass field waiting for it to rise? God, that's good. God, that's some good Japanese horror. This whole season has had such a great vibe, such a great sense of, like, traditional Japanese film horror. Like, between this and the- the- <laughs> the vases that suck people up, it's like, I don't know, uh, it, it's- it's a great- Great vibe. <laughs> if you throw this scene into live action, like, this image of this, like, headless demon chasing these people through a field while the sun slowly rises over, over some mountains, it would be terrifying and gorgeous, and A24 would buy it in a heartbeat. But also, wait, doesn't this demon have to, like, eat these people to regain its power? I feel like, personally, Having a head is a pretty crucial part to the eating experience. Unless he's just gonna tear chunks off of them and stuff them down his neck hole, which honestly would be pretty metal. Oh my god, what? Everybody calm down. Everybody chill the fuck out here and get Nezuko in some shade. Wrap her in her clothes! Why is this such a fucking disaster? Do not trick me into thinking Nezuko is about to burn to death right now. Okay, Demon Slayer, that's not- like, that's absolutely not gonna fly right now. <laughs> 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 
There's absolutely zero chance Tanjiro's gonna let Nezuko roast to go kill this demon. Like, shut up, you're not fooling anybody. Well, like, what are we doing here? Why is this show being such an emotional bully right now? Like, I'm not falling for any of this shit. <laughs> God, it's beautiful. Oh, man. Wow. Uh, hot take. This show's gorgeous. <laughs> Nezuko, stop! Stop, 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 stop! That was the worst kick in the entire series. <laughs> Dude, 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 what? Time out! Stop, 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 stop! Hold up! What are we doing? What ha what's, what's, what's happening? Absolutely stop. We don't have to do this every season. F like, fuck you. Like, fuck you. Is that what you think? You think we have to have a quota of, like, breaking my fucking heart every season? Where are my Nezuko's at? What was all this for? This is how things are gonna play out. Look, look me in the eye right now, Demon Slayer, and tell me that this is the way things are gonna shake down right now. Chill out with this fucking montage. I remember this shit. That's why I'm upset. What, you think I forgot this shit? I'm upset because I remember. You don't have to convince me to be sad right now. Is she actually going to die? This is unbelievably fucked. Tanjiro's so distraught right now, the kid's out here trying to smell colors. <laughs> oh, fuck, it's good. It's so gorgeous. I don't even know half of these colors existed. I'm experiencing new colors right now. You know how crazy that is? Awesome. Awesome switch and power dynamic. Oh, that was sick. That was really cool. That was a fuck. that was an iconic shot. Yo. Oh my god. That was maybe the best shot in all of Demon Slayer. Like, Demon Slayer has a lot of iconic, like, famous, memorable shots. I think that should be the new one. Ta like, big boy Tanjiro about to cut tiny little demon. That looked great. That looked amazing. <laughs> Flabbergasted. Absolutely befuddled. Why are you so surprised? That was like the worst lie you could have come up with. I love the idea of this dude showing up to court like, Your Honor, please take pity on a blind man. You aren't blind. How the fuck did you know? <laughs> This is like the 20th decapitation we've seen in this show, and somehow each one is still more impressive than the previous. Dude, start cooking your way over to Nezuko before Nezuko starts cooking her way into the afterlife. See, that makes me think she's not actually dead. No body means no death, you ain't tricking me. Is this bitch human now? Oh, ha! Ha! Good morning, Nezuko! How? Did Genya feed her some shit? The fact that she's maybe not a demon anymore makes this death fake out a little bit more okay. I hate fake out deaths, but at the very least, we still get a change to the status quo. Nezuko becomes vocal. <laughs> Reasonable question. Tanjiro didn't pass out because he was tired, he passed out because he ran out of blood. 
ついに太陽を克服する者が現れたよくやったハンティング I totally forgot that Muzan was masquerading as some weird little kid for some reason. <laughs> Great reaction. Completely valid reaction from this other girl. If that happened to somebody I was standing next to, I'd just be like, Every, uh, everything alright? Take your time, just answer when you're ready. Ugh, gross. Nezuko's a chosen demon. Don't love that, but whatever. I better get a real ass explanation as to why she's immune to the sun. It better not be that she's like just a shiny Pokemon or something. Okay, but don't say as you know if he's asking you a question. He clearly doesn't know if he has to ask. I love how hard they went on the black and white aesthetic. Like, they didn't just not color the image. They added film grain, they have this, like, light flickering glow, like, in the center of frame to emulate, like, old film lighting. The water droplets are, like, different thicknesses and different light intensities. Like, some of them are white, some are black. Like, the ones that are closer to camera are black to show that they're, like, not being lit by the fake lights on the fake set of this animated show. It's just clear a lot of passion and work went into this style, rather than just like I said, like taking the color out of the image. God, it's so weird seeing her like this. I feel like she's got too much chin or something. Like, this just straight up doesn't look like Nezuko to me anymore. I, I feel like I'm looking at, like, a fan edit. Or, like, a photoshopped fake image. Also, wait a second. Nezuko's still a demon. She's just immune to the sun. So, fucking put a cork back in that mouth, right? Did she also lose her lust for human blood? Like, what was the, what was the point of the muzzle in the first place, then? I don't know why Genya blushing took me by surprise. I just never really considered that Genya had a sexuality, let alone that he'd be into women. I don't know, probably because you kept her muzzled for a year and you're constantly riding her like a mule. I'd say that probably did a good amount of psychological damage. This is some of the best animation in the entire series. What a great pout. What an amazing pouting animation. Oh my god, is this a setup? No. <gasps> I thought they were gonna kill him. I thought this was about to be Demon Slayer's Red Wedding episode, and Zenitsu was about to take over his protagonist. This is a much sweeter outcome. This is cool. And that is season three of Demon Slayer. Not as good. I'll get it out right now. Not as good as season two. Not as good as Mugen Train. But not bad. Better than season one. No, not bad at all. It's... The, it, it's like weird. It's a weird feeling season. The pacing feels weird. I have praised hundreds of times Demon Slayer Season 2's, like, momentum and pacing. I think it's a masterclass in momentum, in narrative momentum. This one's weird because you have two separate demon fights going on simultaneously, and, like, every other episode is a, like, is a backstory episode, and it just feels strange. Like, we introduce a lot of characters, but I don't feel particularly connected to any of them. Mitsuri, I didn't get too close to. Tokido, kind of. I got a little, like, invested in him. Hopefully we get more out of him. Genya feels like he's hardly in the season. Some, but, like, that's the thing. For some reason, it feels like these characters are hardly in 
any of the season at all. And maybe that's just a factor of like the season is so short, but I don't know. I felt like a little more connected to Tengen than I did Tokido or Mitsuri, and especially Genya. Like, I really wanted more out of him. And again, maybe we will in the next season. Like, the next season, I believe, is the Hashira training arc. And so maybe that's when, like, that's all- that's like the character development arc, you know? That's when we get all of our interactions between characters. Maybe it's a little less fighting. Um, and we're just, like, focusing on building relationships, which I would honestly be fine with. Um, my podcast co-host on Otaku's Anonymous podcast, make sure you check that out, he has expressed concerns that, like, he thinks the training arc can't be fit into, like, one season, or that it's not enough for a full season. But I- I think Demon Slayer could use a season of, like, character development, honestly. Or not even, like, I, characters do develop through combat. I think that's what Demon Slayer does very well. But it could use some more, like, character interaction. Uh, like, relationship building. Rather than, like, seeing characters develop because their backstories are, like, through fights. This episode went really hard, though. I love- this was a season of fusion. Like, Tanjiro- Tanjiro fused his abilities with Nezuko's, he fused his abilities with Zenitsu's. I would love to see more of that in the future. I would love to see a Nosuke mix beast breathing with like water or flame breathing or something like that. Like that would be sick. But yeah, I mean, again, like I said, entirely enjoyable season, great animation, a little too much CGI on the forefront. I like, they did a better job at hiding it in like the previous seasons. But yeah, and I also just think that like, Mugen Train's a 10 out of 10, uh, Entertainment Light, uh, Entertainment District is a 10 out of 10. So any 8 or 9 out of 10s are gonna look a little worse. I think, I'd call this an 8, like an upper 8 out of 10 if I'm ranking them, and then season 1 is for sure like a 7, maybe 6. But my scale, my scale is different than most people's. Like, a five isn't dog shit. Five is just like, that's good, that's fine, that's okay. You know, I feel most people would label, most people, seven and up is anything just worth looking at, and then anything below a seven is like, not even art. But yeah, those are just my thoughts on Demon Slayer Season 3. Um, let me know what you thought of the season in the comments. As always, I'll be down there too. I'd love to discuss this with you guys. No spoilers, please, on future seasons. And I will see you guys next time. Hold on to me, baby. Won't you come a little closer? Will I live for now?